what are the habits what are what kind of dopamine what are you trying to satisfy and that's really a big thing because there's tension where's the tension where do you feel the tension what's going on and then why are you going to food hey it's coach carla i'm here to talk to you today about binge eating this is something that i've struggled with and so when people ask me about it i say look i have like 30 years of experience with this. I'm 40 now, and I've been doing this for most of my life, binge eating. And so I've had to study it, I've had to learn about it. Of course, I'm a nutrition coach as well. I'm a fitness coach. And so I'm trying to figure it out for myself and also my clients. So it's been a long journey, and there's so many aspects to it. The biggest thing with binge eating is we tend to feel like we feel so defeated. We feel like a failure. We feel like we're never gonna get over it. We feel like this defines us, and all we can think about is food, how much we hate that we're stuck with food. And what it actually can be when it comes to food, it's, it becomes an addiction actually. And this is something that you have to just look at it and be like, is this an addiction for me? Is this something that I feel like I, I have to have? And in many cases it is. And the advantage of other addictions, I know all addictions are not good, but the advantage of other types of addiction is you can usually remove the, the source of your addiction. So if it's alcohol, get it out of the house. If it's drugs, get it out of the house. But when it comes to food, you have to eat, right? So it's very difficult to be, you can't get all the food out of the house. So it's in the house, it's there, and you're used to going to food. It becomes, there's so many aspects to it. I'm gonna break it down for you though. Number one that you need to know about binge eating is it's not about the food. It doesn't actually matter what you're eating in many cases, but typically you're gonna go for sweet, you're gonna go for salty, you're gonna go to things that you really enjoy but it's not about the food. There's something going on in your brain. There's emotions, there's hormones that are triggered, and it's so much more than food. So that's the first thing. Understand that it's not about the food. It's a dopamine, so number two, it's a dopamine response to a stressor. So you get triggered, you feel stressed, you feel frustrated, whatever. Things are escalating. Maybe you just got in a fight with your kids. Maybe you just had a really hard day at work. You feel stressed, you get home, and right away you want that dopamine hit. You want something to make you feel better. So that's what you go to. You go to food because you've always gone to food. And other people, like I said, they'll go to drugs, alcohol, uh, pornography, uh, work, like workaholics. There's all kinds of things that we can go to. But for binge eaters, they've gotten used to going to food. And so if you're a binge eater, that's why you go to it. It's habit also. So you have this stress, you walk into the kitchen, you open the fridge door, and you satisfy that dopamine hit, you satisfy that stressor, and all of a sudden you feel better in the moment. So do you see how, in a way, it's not really your fault? This is sort of the way that your body is designed. Your body is designed to get relief from stress. So it's going to always look for a way out. And so that's why it's so important to really look at what's going on. Ask yourself, why am I doing this? How long have I done this before? When did it start? What was going on when it started? And when you first remember that memory of binge eating, I want you to think, okay, how old was I? And what was going on at that time? So for me, I remember it very clearly. It was a bag of those crisper crackers. And I remember just eating the entire bag and feeling very sick. So sick, in fact, that I went into the bathroom and I tried to make myself throw up because my stomach was just, ugh, I just felt horrible. All that salt and grease and carbs. But of course, you know, I don't have a very good uh, reflex that, you know, for gag, so I couldn't make myself throw up. So I just had to deal with that sick feeling. So think about how old you were. For me, it was coming home from school, lots of chaos. I was tired. I was feeling kind of stressed and I just needed to kind of have an escape. So it was a way to just sort of calm my mind and make me feel maybe somewhat in control of the situation. So what are the habits? What are, what kind of dopamine, what are you trying to satisfy? And that's really a big thing because there's tension. Where's the tension? Where do you feel the tension? What's going on? And then why are you going to food? What are you trying to satisfy? Because here's the thing, we're all hungry. Okay, we're all hungry for something. For you, maybe you're hungry for attention. Maybe you're hungry for unconditional love. Maybe you're hungry for whatever it is that's inside you, there's sort of this emptiness. You're lonely maybe. And so you are trying to satisfy that. You're trying to get away from that pain, that discomfort. So food is doing that for you. And I mean, you could argue that food is a much better choice than drugs, alcohol, many other things that you could be doing. So 
that's why it gets overlooked. A lot of people say, oh, you're just, you're just overeating on food. What's the big deal, right? Like better that than many things. And they might be right, but it's still not helpful for you. It's still going to be very difficult because you are going to feel like a failure. You're going to feel defeated because it keeps happening. And you've probably, if you're anything like me and most people that I work with, my clients, when it comes to binge eating, you've tried everything. You've worked with, you know, maybe a nutrition coach. You've done different fitness programs. You've tried every diet under the sun, but you always go back to the binge eating. You always go back to feeling like a failure. And it's super difficult. And it's something that you have to take seriously. Don't just, you know, push it away. Don't just sweep it under the rug because this is something that's affecting your life. It's affecting your mental health. It's affecting your physical health. It's affecting your hormones. It's affecting every area of your life. So don't just let this go. Don't let people dismiss it. If it's bothering you and it's affecting you, then you need to do something about it. And you are hopefully feel compelled to do something about it and not to give up. Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you. I kind of talked to you about where this is coming from. Now I want to talk about some simple strategies to kind of help you get over this. And I don't even want to say get over it. I want maybe get through it, um, get to the other side of it, maybe even just get some relief from it. Okay. Uh, number one, too much restriction causes us to want to binge eat. When we feel like, when are we going to get our next meal? When are we going to be able to have another ice cream sandwich? When am I going to be able to eat another cookie? Well, I just started this diet. It's going to be three weeks, three months, six months before I can. So every time you have that opportunity, you're just stuffing your face because I don't know when I'm going to get a chance to do this. And it feels so good to have all the sugar in me. It gives me so much dopamine. It's like a drug. It's like a hit, right? But the problem is, is it always makes us feel really bad after and it doesn't help us in the long run at all. It only gives you that really quick fix. And the quick fix is so quick that sometimes it lasts less than a second. I feel good. Oh, I feel guilty. Why did I do that? I'm such an idiot. Blah, 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 blah. And then we start talking down on ourselves. So it's not worth that tiny little feeling of relief when you have so much guilt, shame, and frustration with yourself after that. So number one, don't have, don't do any kind of diet that has too much restriction because it's going to fuel that binge eating, that overeating. Number two, you want to watch your nutrition. So first of all, binge eating can, can often be caused because you, it starts with like a need. I need to have something. You're actually deficient. So first of all, have a balanced diet. Make, for, make sure you're getting all your micronutrients. So that's your, um, your iron, your vitamin C, your vitamin D, your magnesium, your omega-3s, blah, 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 blah. If you have all the things that you need, then at least you know that the binge eating isn't a result of some sort of nutrition deficiency. Because when we have a nutrition deficiency, then we our body is actually starving. It's craving those things that we're deficient in. So that's the first thing. Don't have a restricted diet um, and make sure that your micronutrients and macronutrients, which is protein, carbs, and fats, are nicely balanced. You're eating enough and you're getting the proper nutrition. And then number three, find healthy ways to cope with stress. Make sure you're doing some of that self-care that people talk about, right? Maybe a long walk, a hot bath, watching a movie with your honey, spending time with your kids, going for a horseback ride, going swimming, um, going for a ski, doing the things that light you up. Maybe it's even going to the spa. Maybe it's even just having a bit of a longer shower. Maybe that just makes you feel better listening to music. There's so many different things that you can do that are gonna help you with that self-care. Another thing that I want to mention, okay, this is point number four, but also it's a huge factor. If you have ADHD, from the research that I've done and from myself discovering that I have ADHD, many people with ADHD tend to binge eat. And it, what it is, it's, it's a lack of dopamine, okay? So people that have ADHD, they don't process dopamine properly. So they kind of always need this constant dopamine hit. And that's why they're always moving, they're distracted, um, they're eating, munching on things, they're talking too much, they're, they need this stimulation all the time. And that's why a lot of people with ADHD end up on Ritalin or Adderall or some of these other medications. So if you have ADHD or you spec, suspect that you might have ADHD, and if you binge eat a lot, it would probably be, be a, worth it to at least look into that a little bit if it's been something that's going on for a long time. Um, look into it because if you do have ADHD, you may need medication. This may not be something that you can just tackle with willpower and trying to do the right self-care. Okay. So if it's extreme, you may need to go down that route. So I would 
I would book a, a refer or a, a book a consultation with your doctor and then maybe ask to be referred to a specialist if the doctor can't really help you because if you do have ADHD it's something that you're you're you may need help with okay uh, even just to kind of get you out of that the other thing is if you've been struggling with binge eating a long time and it's really got a hold of you it may also be a good idea to talk to a doctor you might need maybe a little bit of an appetite suppressant or maybe your binge eating is related to depression maybe you need an antidepressant i am not a pill pusher i'm not all about medication i'm all about being natural but there is a time where sometimes it's necessary just to kind of get you back on your feet and then maybe wean yourself off of it so just be aware that that could be a possibility and if it's bad enough that might be a, actually the best possibility, or at least the first response before you try a lot of these other things. Uh, but I want you to know that you can get to the bottom of this, okay? I don't want you to feel like you're never going to be able to get over it. Um, this is always going to be a problem for you because maybe, okay, I'm 40, maybe you're 50, 60, 70, 80, and this has always been a problem for you. But <laughs> that's okay, all right? That's the past. But what are we going to do moving forward? What do we want to do with the rest of our lives? Because we don't know how long we have. And if we're struggling with binge eating for our entire life and we're feeling bad about ourselves, maybe we're overweight, our hormones are all over the place because we're binging and restricting and we're just kind of a mess, that's no way to live. That affects you. That affects you deeply. So make sure that you get help. And chances are too, if you struggle with binge eating, it's very possible that other people that you know do, maybe your children do. So you have to look after yourself. And what I would recommend is sometimes you need a therapist, okay? Because a lot of this stuff, like I said, it's not about the food. Binging is not about the food. It's about the mindset. You can have three different people in a room and there could be a whole bag of cookies in front of them. And one person will take one cookie, enjoy it and go. The next person will be like, I'm not really hungry. So as much as I like cookies, I'm just not hungry. I'm not gonna eat it. And then the other person is gonna wait till everybody's gone and eat the whole bag, right? Those are the binge eaters. And what happens with binge eating too is it's not overeating. So I want to just quickly show you the difference between overeating and binge eating. Overeating is feeling full after your meal. You just ate a little bit too much. Maybe you had an extra portion of potatoes and gravy and you're like, oh, I ate a little bit too much. Binge eating is when you're eating and you feel like you cannot stop until you're absolutely stuffed or maybe even sick. And you tend to do it alone you tend to do it when you're stressed. You tend to do it maybe at certain times of the day. It typically is in the evening. Some people it's in the afternoon and you feel like you just can't stop. It's almost like this automatic thing, this switch turns off in your brain or turns on in your brain maybe, and you just go and you feel like you can't stop. So binge eating, that's more what it is, okay? But overeating can be a problem too, but I'm talking specifically about binge eating here. And a lot of it, you, you may need um, to go to, well, like, like I said, go to a doctor, okay? and get maybe some medication or just get an assessment done. Maybe see if you have ADHD, et cetera. You may need to go to a psychologist and actually talk to somebody, a therapist, and work through some of the issues that are coming up for you. Find out what's triggering you to binge eat. Where is it coming from? What from your past is causing you this hurt and this pain? Look into, you know, maybe why you're lonely, why, why you're afraid, why you're stressed. Look into that. Um, look into your schedule, your structure your sleep patterns, how much water you're drinking, your nutrition, all of that kind of stuff. Find a coach that can work with you and help you to get over this because there's so many factors. You can't just will yourself to stop binge eating. I mean, maybe there's the odd person that can, maybe like the David Goggins in the room can do that, but most people need some help. I know for me, I needed help and it's been a long process of learning more and more and having some wins and then failing and then having some more wins and having someone alongside me too, to encourage me and to support me. So if you need that, if you feel like, Carla, this is resonating with me, everything you said makes sense to me, then raise your hand right now and commit that you're going to do something about this. You're not going to let it go another day until you get some help so that you can get over this and you can live a thriving, wonderful life with the freedom from food. And thanks for watching. And I hope and pray that you can get over this and that you can live a wonderful, healthy life and look back on this time and think, wow, look how far I've come. Hey, it's Carla. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast today. I have three things I want to tell you about myself, but first, please go check out my company, Power Fitness Online, powerfitnessonline.com or Power Fitness Online, Facebook or Instagram. What I do there is I help you, I train you so you can get fit, strong, healthy, have energy, 
feel good and be at your best because in this life, we wanna be at our best. I do, you do, we all do. So here's three facts about myself. Number one, I've been a fitness trainer for 20 years. Yes, 20 years. Uh, number two, I'm five foot four and three quarters, not five foot four and a half, none of that. Five foot four and three quarters. Number three, I have six kids. Yes, they're all my own. None of them are twins. They're all my own. I had them one at a time and I love my kids so much. So remember, go to powerfitnessonline.com if you want to get fit and stay fit.